Our next demonstration is going to involve how to take these paintings farther and start layering them up. We, uh, we call, call it a process of flux and obliteration. And when you guys do it, you'll take one of your previous starts and work on those as opposed to starting an entirely new painting. But I'm starting on a different size and orientation of paper just for fun. So I'm going to start again with automatic drawing with, um, let's see, I will use this long brush to start with which I haven't done before, and I will do it with my left hand, and I'm right-handed. Then I'll go in with, I think, some of this uh, pastel, black pastel, which I haven't used for a while. Then the next thing you can do with that, and this is kind of enough of this for right now, is start going in with uh, white paint. We have, we have acrylic white paint and we have white gesso. They'll both act the same on your paper. And start blocking out parts of it that you may want to eliminate for now. The whole idea is to do this back and forth process between the white paint, obliterating with white paint, going back in with a drawing tool or painting with black paint, it's a process of layering that you can go many, many rounds on this. Um, you can let it dry a little bit in between or not. The effect will be different. And it, it, it winds up, you'll see in a minute, it can look like sort of a mess with all this charcoal -y mixed in with the paint, it gets gray. But if you keep going back and forth and back and forth, eventually you're going to have a really sort of rich, layered painting with a lot of history underneath. Let's wipe this off a little bit. So I'm going to kind of step back and take a look at this uh, and see what I might be thinking where this could go. Although at this stage, it really doesn't matter because you're going to have so many layers, it probably will bear no resemblance to this at the, at the final analysis. So maybe start like that. And you can see it's going to start turning gray right away. Don't be intimidated by the gray. You can add a little water to it. And I'm not overly thinking this right now. I'm just trying to start creating layers. Do you always use water? I do. I mean, I use a lot of water. Um, not necessary. It's just kind of a habit. You can get, like, see here now it's like thinner white paint. So, to, you know, you can vary the water content to, to see what happens. Okay, so now maybe I'll go back in with uh, one of these pencils and start drawing in. I don't really have a, a real plan yet. I don't really have a focus point yet, and it may be not happen until the afternoon. Because I, what I'll probably do is take this to the back and keep playing with it most of the day so we can see what happens. Uh, let's try the little cardboard. It's fun. I recommend it. You might want to wait a little longer than I'm going to wait in between layers. If you let it set up for like maybe two, three minutes, it, it, you'll have less um, of the gray action happening.
We also have, uh, we, you could spray water. There's a couple spray bottles over on the big table. I'm trying to leave some of these lines underneath visible. We'll see which ones make the final cut. And I'm mainly trying to cover the whole paper at the moment, because that's me. We'll try this pastel. And I'm feeling that the main focus is ultimately going to rest here, but we'll see.